Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Troy Bernie Meyer with Lessons with Troy. And today I just wanted to give you a brief overview of lots of different lap style instruments, uh, the tunings, and stylistically kind of what each instrument and in tuning lends itself well to naturally play in. Keeping in mind, you can play really any style with any of these instruments and tunings, but you know, some styles are easier to play. So for example, on this instrument, um, a lot of people call it a dobro. But uh, that's the trademark name from Gibson. It's actually called a resonator guitar. And more importantly, a square neck resonator guitar. Notice the square neck. Um, if you go to buy one of these, you'll find there's round neck and square neck. The round neck ones are the ones that you hold like a regular guitar, right? The round neck. Square neck you set on your lap. So that's the style that I teach and play. And uh, check out the strings, how high the strings are off the neck there, right? So that means that you can't push the strings down. You got to, you know, on the fret, right? These, what you see here, that's just fret markers. Some instruments have frets, but really this thing here, your, your, your bar, that's actually your fret and it's your finger. So it kind of doubles up. So this particular one, notice the uh, flared ends. It's a Shearhorn stainless steel bar, and it's made for... You know, getting in between the strings, doing doing uh, hammer-ons and pull-offs, right? It's a lot of finesse work where you tilt your bar up and you're getting that tip of your bar kind of in between the strings. So there are round bars, you know, circular uh, bars like pedal steel players use, Hawaiian players. A lot of times we'll use a, a bullet bar, they're called. But I, I really like this one. Other than pedal steel, you know, I pretty much use this one on all these instruments, right? It just feels more natural to me. But this is what resonator guitar sounds like. And the resonator is underneath this part. It looks like a hubcap. And, uh, you know, that's where the cone is. And that amplifies the sound. And then sound comes out of these two ports here. And really what I've found for miking it is I put the mic about about center here could probably stand to come up right where it's kind of in between the uh, the holes there and the resonator and it kind of balances out the bass kind of comes out more here and treble more here right so bluegrass you're looking at country country blues uh, blues music um now, this one does not have, I don't think, as bluesy of a sound as my tricone here. That's a national tricone. I'll play that in just a second. But I do like GBD, GBD tuning because GBD, GBD, right? It's two stacked triads. So when you get a pattern going, you got that same pattern. If you play that on these top three strings, you got that same pattern on your lower three strings. Right? And, it, and also in this tuning, I've found that the scales and the patterns, licks, everything kind of is real tight on it, you know, because that, that triad, whereas in open D tuning, sometimes uh, it spreads out. So let's remember this sound, kind of what that sounds like, you know. tricone out in just a second and show you the difference between the two so what got me into playing this was jerry douglas i loved his playing um, even before i ever started playing this i started playing it in 2007 and i tell you what got me hooked on this sound was this right when i went into music folk a, a music store in near st louis uh, I went in there and to buy a guitar, actually, an acoustic guitar, and they were like super expensive, you know, 6000 or something. Um, keep in mind, not all the guitars there are that, that expensive, but the ones I thought that sounded really good were, were uh, really expensive. And so I saw uh, on the wall a resonator guitar, a real cheap one for like 250 bucks. I said, let me try that. And I noticed just immediately it's much louder, you know, because of the resonator. And then um, the guy who was helping me showed me how to put on finger picks, right? You got to wear finger picks and a thumb pick to play this kind of instrument. And uh, the thing that got me hooked was a static note, right? A note 
kind of staying like that, and then and then hearing that other note kind of slide in, where one note staying the same, and then another note is moving, and that that just really got me hooked. I love that sound. So this particular one is a is a Meredith. Uh, it's, it's made by Tudor Meredith, and uh, it's all mahogany. I really like mahogany as a wood for resonator guitar. Um, it it just has a warm sound to it. It's not overly loud or bright. So that's what that sounds like. Let's go ahead and grab the tricone now, and I'll show you the difference between the two. Okay, so this one sounds like this. So although I'm playing, I love to play blues on this, you know, some people will play um, Hawaiian music uh, on this, like the old kind of soul, ho'opi'i stuff, and and um, uh, just a real old kind of uh, uh, more acoustic kind of Hawaiian stuff. But it's got three cones in it, hence the name, tricone. Uh, this is made by National, once again, square neck. This one actually has a wooden neck to it, metal body. It's really heavy really heavy it's way heavier than the uh, resonator guitar and just in, you know this is like night and day that's a weisenborn super lightweight right so if i turn it like this you can see the cones here uh here and down here three cones so the sound comes out here and also here now this was in this is in a different tuning i have this one in open d tuning <laughs> So if you remember what I played on, on Resonator Guitar, I played a lick like this. The cool thing about Open G, GBD, GBD, and Open D is the, the high four strings on this one are actually the same intervals as the middle four strings of this one. So all my stuff I learn on here and teach on here, you can apply to Open D tuning. It's basically in between your, high, your low and your high D strings would be the top four strings of your resonator guitar, right? So all the kind of bluegrass. Right, all that kind of stuff you can get on those middle four strings. But then you bring that high string in. Just such a cool bluesy sound, real gutty. Um, now let's take a, a hard turn, same tuning, right? I'm going to grab my Weizenborn style guitar um, and uh, play that. So let me put this one up. So I pretty much stick to blues with 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 uh, that one, you know. Uh, the this Weizenborn style, first of all, has a shape like this, and this um, kind of instrument has a hollow neck. So that, that's why you don't really want to put a tight tuning on a Weizenborn style guitar because it's just too tight for the, for the instrument, right? So let me show you what this sounds like. So it's just like an acoustic guitar. The sound comes out here. There's no resonator or anything. So it's a much quieter instrument. <laughs> Thank you. 
kind of what that one sounds like. Once again, it's it's a lot quieter than a resonator, a lot quieter than a tricone. But it kind of has more of an acoustic guitar quality to it. So if you like that sound of an of slide on an acoustic, which I, I love, you know. You know, you might want to get a, a, a wise and born. I have this one tuned to open D as well. And uh, I'm not sure if I said what that tuning is. D, A, D, F sharp, A, D. So in open D tuning, you get this, this cool low gritty power chord on your low three strings, right? And then you get another power chord on your fourth, second, and first string. Right, so you can do stuff like that. And then your major third is on your third string. So that's what kind of defines the major sound of it. And then like I said, um, think of these middle four strings as the top four strings on a resonator guitar. So yeah, this is, uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned the wood, Koa wood and uh, uh, Bear Creek Guitars, Bill Harden at Bear Creek Guitars made this, but just beautiful wood. And then I also put, had him put locking tuners. I really love locking tuners. That makes string changing real easy. Just pop it through there and lock it down. Uh, and then as far as miking it, I just put the mic right over the, the sound hole. Okay, let's step into the world of lap steel now and uh, check out the Hawaiian uh, lap steel. For this one, this is what this one sounds like. First of all, it uh, looks like this. It's mahogany. It's made by Bill Asher at Asher Guitars. It's an eight string. Uh, but I always tell people, think of your top six strings in this particular tuning, C, E, G, A, C, E. sound and then you add this this particular uh, lap steel I have tuned uh, to a C13 tuning actually I have a six strings on here but I have it tuned like Alan Akaka uh, kind of taught me he was my teacher Hawaiian lap steel teacher and uh, he puts a seven string to a B flat and then the eight string he puts to a low C and he plays in lots of different tunings but uh, I believe that tuning he called he, it was a Jules AC tuning. So it gives you that when you put in the the B flat in there, kind of gives you a C thirteen tuning with the six, right? It's from thirteen. So that's how that sounds. And what makes this sound so Hawaiian is one note, really. It's the sixth of the chord, the A note in this one. If I just played C, E, G, skipped the Hawaiian sounding note, right, my third string, C, E, sounds like a major chord. Now I add that A note in there, the sixth of the tuning. And 
gives you that sound. So obviously you're going to be playing Hawaiian music with this, um, but you can play a lot of the old Hank Williams senior stuff, you know, Western swing stuff. Like I said, I have A6 strings on here, um, and you can put it in A6 tuning, and that's a tuning used a lot in Western swing and that kind of a thing. <clears throat> that would be F sharp, A, C sharp, E, F sharp, A, C sharp, E. So real easy to go in and out of different tunings uh, with these strings for sure, but I keep it in in that C E G A C E on the top six strings, and uh, that's what I teach mostly on the site as far as uh, a six tuning goes. Okay, so last but not least uh, is the Duesenberg, and this instrument I've really been focused on the Duesenberg. I've really been focused on for the last couple of years, really. I am going to change the tone up, right? I'm going to put a, a more of an overdriven sound on it, and sounds like this. cool things about this I keep saying it's a Duesenberg that's the brand name Duesenberg uh, but it 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 has some specific things to it. it has these benders these palm benders that make it kind of like a pedal steel right and it also has this neat feature where you undo the that and you can you have a movable uh, capo so say you wanted to play an open E tuning which is like what Derek Trucks and Dwayne Allman are in, you know, on an SG. Uh, well, Les Paul too, Dwayne Allman. Put that on your second fret, tighten it down. And open E is just like open D, but just really two frets up, right? Now you're in open E tuning. <laughs> Other people do make these benders. David Sertano, um, he's out of France. He makes palm benders too. Um, uh, so, you know, let me show you what these sound like actually. So hopefully I don't break a string, but. Uh So what you end up getting is the the th this one back here uh, bends your third string, right? It bends it, it tightens it. It tightens it from an F sharp to a G note. And this one here tightens the A note to a B. So G B, right? That's the uh, root and third of a G major chord. So if you're in open D tuning and you're on a D chord and you push the benders down, say you grab your fourth, third, and second string, it gives you a G major chord. So it's kind of cool when you're playing, you can, I've got a volume pedal here, you can do, right, you can do the swells and things like that. Um, the other thing that I like about oh, this open D tuning, right, I really like playing obviously blues and that kind of stuff but if you're wanting more of the singer songwriter stuff or country stuff focus on your third and your and your first string and you get kind of that c6 or pedal steel thing where you you can use what's called slants where you slant your bar or straight bar but but that third and and first string gives you uh sixth parallel sixth That's kind of the, that sound of, uh, you know, the yodel sound, but also you can easily get uh, little intervals, right? Two note intervals where you can highlight a minor chord if you want, or an inversion of a kind of a major chord, right? And if you have the benders on there, it's real easy to play, say you're playing a G chord. If you move that up a minor third or three frets, you get... 
uh, G minor, right? So G major is on your fifth fret. I think I said G major. Put a G major on your fifth fret, move it up three frets, and you got a G minor with the pushing the second string bender down. Kind of a cool thing. Well, um, I wanted to keep this short, not talk too much, just kind of show you. So let's review a little bit. Blues really on anything. Obviously, you could hear me play blues. But open D tuning and open G tuning, I find, are the most versatile tunings. Um, I'm kind of real into open D, and the I love the low, uh, swampy kind of thing from the, the lower uh, strings. But open D doesn't have as tight of uh, patterns, I find, as open G does. Um, but you learn open G, and you apply that to open D, just focus on your middle four strings, like I said. So I would play Hawaiian on that and old Hank Country. I would play real pretty stuff, country blues that you would want on an acoustic on that one. Bluegrass, country, country blues, blues, jazz, anything really that you want that dobro sound on, on a resonator guitar. Um, Duesenberg, you can get that pedal steel thing. Uh, However, all your Dwayne Allman kind of that rocking thing, this thing is just great for, for that kind of a vibe. And then the tricone, um, definitely blues, that swampy kind of uh, uh, delta blues, country blues, that kind of a thing. Uh, open D tuning on almost everything except open G, high open G, um, and C6. So I hope you enjoyed that. Be sure to check out my site. Uh, check out the new one, the new streaming one, lwtstreaming.com. And we'll see you on the next lesson. Thanks, guys.